Another human with a death wish. Welcome to the mall, tourist. Come on, here you are in the mall of our nation's fine capital. Taking in the sights, visiting the monuments. Face it, you're a tourist. Nice to meet you too. I'm the sentry for Underworld. City of ghouls, inside the museum. For a tourist, you're pretty clueless. My name's Willow, by the way. Sure did. Underworld, it's right inside the Museum of History, then through the big skull. Most of the residents ain't crazy about humans, but they'll sell to you, fix you up so long as your caps are good and you ain't a ghoul hater. Those knuckle-draggers? Nah, they don't bother us ghouls. Maybe they see us as kin or something, I don't know. Now there's other assholes. Yeah, you know, those humans like you. Well, maybe not like you, I don't know, but humans all the same. The Brotherhood of Steel guys with their testosterone and power armor. Those psycho talent company mercs. Those other assholes. Till next time, Sightseer. Oh, well, would you look at that? We got us a smooth-skinned visitor. Hoo-wee! We ain't seen one of your type in a long time. Smooth skin? You know, because your skin is so smooth and tasty. Relax, I'm just kidding. But I had you going, didn't I? You're in Underworld, smooth skin. It's the only safe place for we ghouls in D.C. We're here, out of sight and out of mind. The mutants leave us alone, and the slavers usually don't come this far into the city, so it's not bad. Really, the Brotherhood of Steel is the only thing we have to worry about. So long as we don't leave Underworld, that is. That's right. As long as you don't bother us, we won't bother you. Feel free to come and go, trade, sleep, whatever. Just make sure that you leave whatever trouble is following you at the door, because we don't want it. So enjoy your stay, smooth skin.
bastards. They don't seem to be able to tell us apart from the super mutants. Or maybe they just don't care. They see us and shoot on sight. At least they have the common courtesy to miss most of the time. Still, bigots. Enjoy your stay. Just try and keep from shooting up the place. We got a nice little deal going on down here. We'd like to keep it nice. Me? I keep every hunk of old rusted pre-war garbage around here in operating condition. We've got lights, water, and ventilation all running off the old crap they used to keep this place going for the tourists. I've managed to keep it going so far, but, well, I'm not sure how long I can keep it up. We've scavenged just about all the scrap metal from all the places we can safely get to. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Hell, not before long I'm gonna have to disassemble poor old Cerberus for parts. Hey, you get around, don't you? Tell you what, you bring me back any scrap metal you find out there, and I'll trade you whatever I can. We can work out a trade. We've got some stuff around here that we don't need, but a smooth skin like you might make use of it. Well, all right. That's good to hear, stranger. Just come on back to me when you've gathered some scrap metal. You'll find it just about anywhere. On junked robots, in old buildings, you name it. Really? Great. I can finally get around to patching up the heaters. For every five bits of scrap metal you give me, I'll give you a stim pack, some rat away, or a dose of rat -X. I need scrap, you need goods. We both win. Can you pay me? Then I can repair your stuff. We were driven underground, um, uh, almost 50 years ago now. Between the super mutants, the beasts, and you crazy humans, it's not safe up there. So we stay down here, out of sight and out of trouble. We get a few smooth skins every so often, but most of us don't trust them. You're not going to give us more reasons not to be trusting, are you? Let me know if you have any of that scrap metal to sell. Oh, why, hello there. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Quinn. You too, stranger. I know a lot of people around here don't take kindly to humans wandering around, but I've met a lot of your people in my travels. Yeah, just east of here. Bunch of guys with guns are holed up there. Bye. Can I help you, Smooth Skin? Oh, a human. Well, hello. Welcome to Underworld Outfitters. It's... It's been so long since I had a customer. Well, we spend it at Carol's, or the Ninth Circle, but I don't like it there. The rest we give to Quinn to trade for stuff we need whenever he goes out. Well, yeah, there's a lot of old pamphlets and stuff down here. I've pretty much read it all. It used to be part of the Museum of History. The exhibit that used to be here was focused on what happens after death. Hell and whatnot. A lot of it was focused on this old book called Paradise Lost. It's about a guy who goes to hell. Pretty interesting stuff. I found a big box of copies of the book in one of the back rooms. Here, take one. Nobody around here wants them. At first it was just a couple people after the war. This was one of the only places that wasn't falling down or on fire after the bombs fell. I think that Carol is actually one of the few that were here then. But over the years, word got around. There would have been ghouls living in little pockets all around. Not really so much anymore. Most of them either went feral or ended up here. I'm sure there are still a few out there. But anyone with any sense is in Underworld. Not really. The super mutants leave us alone. I guess whatever they do that turns people like them doesn't work on us. 
The Brotherhood of Steel will fire on us if we're out in the open, but they don't bother us down here. We've had some raiders and slavers poke their heads in, but we've got Sharon and Cerberus and everyone else to take care of them. I guess when it comes down to it, being this far out of everyone's way is a good deal for us. Come back any time. It's kind of lonely down here. That's Hedge Hood, civilian on deck. I am Cerberus. It is my solemn duty to guard the citizens of Underworld against any and all threats, both foreign and domestic. So, yes, I'm the guard dog. This is a town full of peace-loving ghouls, so check your bigotry at the door. They're just like humans. They feel, they hurt, they bleed. They deserve the same love and respect as any human, and don't you forget it. At least that's what they programmed me to say. Personally, I think they're a bunch of rotting zombie maggot farms, and I'd send them all back to hell if I could. Damn this combat inhibitor! Negatory! I have been programmed to remain on premises at all times. In the event of hostilities, I will respond with deadly force. Go, Underworld! Go, ghouls! Eh! Damn this pansy zombie programming. Closing dialogue system. What have you heard? I haven't heard a damn thing. Inspiration quotes from the mouth of your president, John Henry Eden. Oh. Oh. Mind. Hey, look at that. A human with hair. Hey, you think we can do something about that? Yeah, man. That's what I do. I cut hair. I know, I know you look around here and there ain't a lot of work to show off, right? These corpses only got half a head of the stuff, so I never get a chance to work on a full head. Come on, no charge. Remember, no charge. humans for you. Always so goddamn friendly. I hope you don't mind the I hope smell. you don't mind the smell. I know, how sensitive, I know how sensitive you humans can be. Talk to Azrakal. Don't make me say it again. Excellent. An well now, looky here. We got us a smooth skin that I ain't ever seen before. I'm Azrakal, and this... This is the Ninth Circle. Folks got problems, and I got liquor to sell them. Well, liquor and a few other pick-me-ups, huh? You need anything, uh, you just let me know. Yeah, just east of here. Bunch of guys with guns are holed up there. Why, whatever do you mean? I'm a simple barkeep, nothing more. Ah, an educated consumer. My favorite kind. Yes, yes, I think I can help you. Simply... Step over here, my friend, and I'll show you my stock of more potent goods. While there is no law in Underworld, per se, I'd rather not end up at the receiving end of an angry lynch mob. There's no shortage of do-gooders around here, and it would be just like them to take it upon themselves to interfere in a fair business transaction. Honestly, I have something to sell, and you want to buy it. Now, why is that anyone else's business, huh? As you wish, my friend. 
It's the only place in the capital wasteland where my people can escape the misery of the world above. And that misery, well, it makes a man like me very happy and very, very wealthy. Your misery, my wealth. That's Sharon. Let's just say, well, he's a loyal employee. Don't mess with me, and he won't mess with you. Watches over the bar, keeps the drunks in line. Pretty much, I point at something, and uh, Sharon hurts it. He's the best thug a corrupt bartender could ever ask for. He never bothers me with his own annoying sense of morality. His company is rather refreshing, isn't it? But don't mistake his brevity for stupidity. That would be very unwise. Underestimating an opponent has been the last mistake of far too many individuals throughout history. No, he is not. Sir, you insult me. I do not believe in slavery. It is an abomination. I am a firm believer in personal choice. To force another person into bondage is unthinkable. Chains are earned, never forced. Sharon made some choices that landed him in my employ. The matters of our contract is between him and I, no one else. I hold his contract, which makes me his employer. He will do what I ask when I ask, without question. You see, Sharon grew up around a very interesting group of individuals. They, well, I guess you could say that they brainwashed him. He is absolutely loyal to whomever holds his contract. Unfailing, unflinching, until the day that employment ends. Don't get me wrong. I have no doubt that he holds no end of animosity towards me. But so long as he is my employee, he is as gentle as a teddy bear. Oh, would you now? He is a highly valuable asset to me and to the Ninth Circle. What did you have in mind? I suppose that could work, yes. Yes, here's the contract. And I'll take my payment in full. I'll give you the pleasure of informing Sharon yourself. Don't you look absolutely miserable. Pull up a stool and lay down a few caps. Tell Uncle Azrakal all about it. <clears throat> Feel free to lay your troubles at my doorstep. Just bring some caps with you when you do. Talk to... You purchased my contract from Azrakal. So, I am no longer in his service. That is good to know. Please, wait here. I must take care of something. Azrakal, uh, I am told that I am no longer in your service. Yes. All right, let's go. Azrakal was an evil bastard. So long as he held my contract, I was honor bound to do as he commanded. But now you are my employer, which freed me to rid the world of that disgusting rat. And now, for good or ill, I serve you. 
Oh my god! He shot Azrakal! Yeah, what is it? Oh! Oh my, someone new. I'm, I'm so sorry. You must think I'm terribly rude. Welcome. Welcome to Carol's place. I'm Carol. It's not much, I know, but it's mine. So if you need anything, just let me know. Greta will get you any food you want, and I handle the rooms. It's so good to have someone new here, even if it is an ugly old smooth skin. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't make that face. You'll love it here. Gob? Yes, of course. He's my son. Well, not really. Not like you would think of a son. We ghouls don't really work like that. But I love him like he's my own. Do you know him? Have you seen him? Is he all right? That's... that's terrible. But at least I know he's alive. So that's something. If you get up that way again, tell him that I said I miss him and that I love him. But he shouldn't try to escape. It's too dangerous. No, no, he should stay put where he is. I couldn't bear the thought of him getting hurt. That's right, her and I have been together for, oh, about 60 years now. But things haven't really been the same since Gob left. He was like a son to me. I think Greta was always a little jealous of him. Oh, that's such a long story. You couldn't possibly want to hear about that. Well, okay. But it's nothing special. I was born in 2051, so yes, that makes me a pre-war ghoul. I do. I was in a shelter with my father when the bombs hit. In D.C., we had the luxury of getting a warning after the West Coast was... gone. I was just a little girl then. We couldn't afford a space in one of the vaults. I remember filing down into that shelter, my father rushing me in. He stopped to help this one family. And I looked up and called his name. There was a flash of light brighter than anything you can imagine. I woke up a few hours later. The first thing I did was run up to where my father had been. He... He was gone. But the strangest thing, there was his shadow burned into the wall so crisp and clear, like he was standing next to me. The heat had burned it into the concrete. The city was on fire for weeks, maybe months, I don't know. I hid down here in the museum. It was the closest building to the shelter I was in. But I could hear what was happening above. People howling like animals, chaos, looting, killing. It's like every foul thing inside of them came out. It was a nightmare. I... I don't want to talk about it. I don't know how it happens. Dr. Burroughs says it was radiation. All I know is that people kept showing up here in the museum. After things calmed down above ground, we tried to live down here as best we could. After a while, things got strange. My skin started to get dry and flake off. Everyone's did. It took a while. Months. Maybe a year. But sooner or later, everyone ended up like this. Some of them went crazy. Some of us just accepted it. After a while, other ghouls would find their way in here, and Underworld just sort of grew. No one bothered us down here. We were happy enough to leave them alone. And once my Greta showed up, it was a good enough life for me. 
You tell the same story for 200 years, you'll feel pretty uninteresting too. I've been here since we founded the town. Before that, well, life out in the waste wasn't very pleasant for us. But so long as we stay down here, we can live our lives as people, not monsters. I think things are better this way for everyone. You're not bad for a human. Morning, hun, what will it be? To tell you the truth, hun, I don't really know much about it. All I know is that it used to be some sort of exhibit. Something about hell or the afterlife or something. Tulip knows that sort of stuff. Not like anyone around here ever buys anything from that shop of hers. You'll be back. What the hell did you wake me up for, smooth skin? What are you staring at? You'd think you'd never seen a ghoul up close before. Is that so? Even if I call you a milk-sucking, mutant-loving, water-stealing son of a whore? <laughs> I like a human that knows this place. Too many of you think we're all just zombies. They don't know or don't care that we're just as human as they are inside. We bleed, we hurt, we regret. And you know what really pisses me off? They think the only way to kill us is to shoot us in the head, like in the old zombie stories, and that'll put us out of our misery. Hey, I know. Maybe you could help me even the score. Not everyone is as sympathetic to ghouls as you are. In fact, some humans are downright bigots. They treat us like zombies, calling us brain eaters and shufflers. Well, I'm gonna make them pay. Uh, before I get into the details, you don't have anything against killing, do you? Forget it. I guess you aren't the right type. Why the hell did you wake me up? They're ghoul haters. I want them all dead. Don't you think that's enough? It's a place for ghouls. Here we're just people, not monsters. There are too many places where a ghoul can't get a fair shake. Bye. <laughs> 